Occasionally, I receive emails from people who do not know how to load patches to the DX7. So this video will show how easy it is to do with a free program. The Off The Matrix patches were saved with Boom Send SX. There's a link in the description for the Boom site for the free download. The software is really easy to use. There's just two windows for MIDI out and MIDI in. The software can be used with any synth, say a Korg M1 that can load patches over MIDI. There's not a lot of icons that cause it to be confusing. I've got bank three of the author matrix patches loaded. To send patches to the DX7, you will need to select a MIDI out. For the old compact, I used the MPU-401. I'm covering basic issues here. Later, I'll cover more advanced issues, overcoming problems of loading patches to the core Kronos, and how to combine patches from different banks. I have the MIDI cable connected to the MIDI in to receive patches. Next, press the function button. Next, press eight of the green buttons. And the first time you press it, it'll say channel one, but you need to press it again. It will say SYS info unavail, meaning that the system is not available. So what you have to do is press yes to make it available. So then it can receive patches. Next, press the internal button for the memory protect and you want to turn the memory protect off. Now that the DX7 is set up to receive patches, I just need to press send and then the software will send the patches. And it takes about a minute for the patches to be transferred. The DX7 should display MIDI received. It's rather simple. I sometimes sense fear in emails that I receive from people they seem to think sending patches to, to the DX7 could somehow mess it up. I reassure you, the DX7, by just sending patches to it, cannot be damaged. I sent a message to Paul, who is a hardware software engineer, that who has studied this DX7 in hardware, and even wrote code to talk to the DX7 via MIDI. He said the DX7 is early 1980s technology. They didn't upgrade the operating system ROM by downloading it like, to, like we do today. It can't do that. Only the voice data to the RAM can be uploaded and downloaded. If you don't like it, you just upload something else. It can't break the DX7. So loading the patches will just make the DX7 sound a lot better. Okay, for more technical issues, the first time I tried to load patches to the Mod 7 in the Core Kronos, they would not load. It took me a while to figure out that the problem was a code issue. Look at the first three numbers of this bank, F04300. Those are the numbers that should be at the beginning of a bank that will work in software instruments like the Kronos. Okay, now I got the MIDI out of the DX7 connected to the MIDI in of the software. So I'll, now I'll dump the patches and you can see what the code begins with. Okay, I'll scroll back up to the top. See, it starts with B067F and then the F04300 starts. So the problem is my DX7 was sending these three digits that shouldn't be there. So what I discovered is I need to delete these, these three first, first numbers of the code, and then these patches will work in the software instruments. Okay, now I'll cover how to combine patches from different banks. 
For example, say you want to play this house bass, which is in bank three, for the same gig that you need the woodwinds and pads of bank four. I could dump the house split patch to the computer and save it with the BOEM software. Then I would load the bank four patches, and then next I would load the one patch of the house split. Okay, so now I'll show you the steps of how to save an individual patch to software. What I, you do is whenever it's the system's available, whatever patch number you press, that information is going to be sent to the computer. So now when I press 20, it actually dumps the patch information to the computer. So now you see it appeared on the screen, the info. So now what I want to do is save the MIDI in. Save MIDI in as, and I'll just call it house split. And I save this as SysDex. And then save that. So now I just saved that patch. Okay, and here you can see where the uh, house split is saved. Now I could save other patches, say a guitar or anything else I want to combine with the next bank. So it's best to choose a bank where you want the most patches in one and then you have less to worry about um, combining with it. Okay, now I'll select bank four and make sure that I have a MIDI out selected to transmit the patches. And then I'll just press send and it'll take about a minute for the patches to be sent. Okay, bank four was received. Open the house split. Make sure I have a MIDI out. Then send that. And this should go very fast. Okay, the house split was received. So now I need to save it store it to its memory. So I'll pick patch number uh, 17. There wasn't really much there. So now I got this patch combined with other patches in bank four. I'll demo some of the new patches on the DX7, but before I do, I'm still in the uh, my bedroom where my computer is. I'll show you some of my books on my bookshelf. The book I've been recently reading is Francis Schaeffer's Back to Freedom and Dignity. This was written over 50 years ago, but he the book was a response to Skinner's um, behaviorist ideology. It may seem like it's not relevant today, but I was just watching an interview with Ray Kurzweil. He's one of the biggest promoters of AI, and he talked about the development of early life in terms of behaviorist uh, philosophy. So it's really very relevant. Vintage Synth Explorer claims that a split on the DX7, the original DX7, would be impossible, but that's not really true. I was able to make this split, house split of a bass, an organ on the top, and it was modeled after the original house organ on the M1, and then I have the Lately bass down here. So it's so close to the original, I can hardly hear the difference. Actually, I think the uh, DX7 sounds better. The split was combined with some other great patches like the oboe that was in the demo last year. And then I have this great new patch, Voyager.